Hi parents, Mary Stevenson here, founder and director of Parenting with Confidence and a clinical psychologist working with children, teens, parents, families, and young adults. Today's video is on the teenage brain. Do not be afraid. Um, really what I want to cover today is what's most important for parents to know about teenage brain development. Really, the idea today is to answer those why questions parents have about their teenage kids. Why are they so impulsive? Why do they take so many risks? Why are they bored all the time? Why are they so embarrassed by me? I hope to answer some of those questions because a lot of the answers have to do with the brain and how it's developing in those adolescent teenage years. So, what is adolescence or teenagehood? Well, adolescence is a stage of development that's been around forever. It goes across generations, it goes through time, and even other species have an adolescent teenage period of development. For the purposes of this video, we're going to use the neuroscientific or neurobiological definition of adolescence being that it starts at puberty, the beginning of puberty around the age of 12 years old, sometimes a bit younger, and continues until that person is considered an independent member of society. What does that actually mean? Well, that might not happen until someone's in their mid-20s. So the age cutoff for that's about 24 years old. In terms of the brain, adolescence is a major period of brain development. We used to think, prior to about 15 years ago, that most of brain development happened between the ages of 0 and 3 years old. But in the past 10 years, there's been an explosion of research in neuroscience that's shown that there's another big moment of brain development, and that's in those teenage years. So let's dive in and see what's going on. Before I get into what's special about the teenage brain, it's important to understand some basics about the brain. Again, I'm really just going over what is most, most, most important for parents to know, and this little biology moment is just what you need to know to understand the rest of the video. So take a little journey with me to biology class a long time ago. You may or may not have learned this. It might sound familiar or not. Let's take a look. So the brain is made up of many different parts that have different functions. And if we were to zoom in, 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 a million times, we would see the cells of the brain, which are really, really special, and those cells are called neurons. I don't want to make it too simplistic, but at the same time, just in case you don't know or don't remember, we'll run through how neurons work really quick. Do not be afraid. It's going to be relatively painless, I promise. So here we have a picture of two neurons communicating. The message comes in through this way and triggers this neuron to send down an electrical signal. That electrical signal triggers the release of molecules here, which are picked up by the next neuron, which thus triggers another electric signal. And it continues like this all along what's called a neural circuit. Now, as you can see, the two neurons aren't actually connected. There's a little space between the two neurons called the synapse. And these molecules that are released by the first neuron and picked up by the second neuron are a special kind of molecule called a neurotransmitter. And neurotransmitters act as chemical messengers. They send the message from this neuron to that neuron. And the one that we'll be talking about today that's really involved in teenage brain development is called dopamine. So dopamine is the neurotransmitter or chemical messenger that is most implicated in teenage brain development. Another thing that's really interesting though is that in the body, chemical messengers are called hormones. So in our body, the hormones trigger messages that cause physical changes 
such as breast development or body hair growth. So we know for teens, they have physical changes triggered by hormones and they have brain development involving neurotransmitters, specifically dopamine. And there's another thing that goes on with teens, well actually it's going on all through development and it's called synaptic pruning. In synaptic pruning, what happens, it's kind of like pruning a tree. So you saw at the end, these neurons have things that look like branches. And the, when we're learning things, the connections get stronger. And things that we might have learned but don't use anymore begin to get lost. So in teenage brain development, it's not that the brain is actually getting any bigger. It's that the brain is getting, let's say, better connected. So different parts of the brain are able to talk to each other more. And the connections that are being used are getting stronger. And the connections that aren't being used are fading away. Another thing that we know is going on in the teenage brain is that their brains are more susceptible to a very specific neurotransmitter called dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that's involved in the sensation of reward. So it's the chemical that when it's released in our brains makes us feel rewarded. And when we feel rewarded, we're motivated to do whatever we did to get rewarded in the first place again. In teenagers, they're more susceptible to this molecule, this neurotransmitter, this messenger. So in a way, they find reward even more rewarding, especially immediate rewards, which partly explains some of the impulsivity that we see in teens. And when I say impulsivity, I mean acting before thinking. So doing something without really thinking through what the consequences would be or what would happen if they did that. So that's one thing we know about the teenage brain. Another thing is that if we zoom back out, we see that there's changes going on in parts of the brain. And there's two parts of the brain in particular that seem to be really involved in teenage brain development. Those are the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. The limbic system is the part of the brain that's involved with emotions. It's activated when we're feeling different emotions. And there's another part of the limbic system, so there's, limbic, there's a part in it, called the amygdala. And the amygdala is involved with the getting a kick out of risks. It's that little thing that goes like, ooh, that was exciting. And in the teenage years, the limbic system is developing further. Another part of the brain that's developing in those teenage years is called the prefrontal cortex located in the front. It's involved in planning, decision-making, self-awareness, understanding of social interactions, and inhibiting or stopping behavior. So this part of the brain is also actively developing in teenagers. Here's what's going on about risk-taking. So why do teens take what seem like unnecessary and stupid risks? Okay. There's a lot going on. I'm going to try to break it down for you. First off, there's an evolutionary reason why teens take risks. The teenage years, like I said earlier, it's about becoming an independent member of society, which means depending less on caregivers, parents, and being able to be more interconnected with society, their social network. So, Part of being able to get those skills to be able to do that involves trying new things. And trying new things, because they're new, are also risky. So there's a function, there's a reason for this risk-taking behavior. It's getting ready for moving on in life. What's happening in the brain is that first the limbic system starts to develop. So, well, it's already been developing. Don't get me wrong, it's continuing to develop. It's getting more refined. It's getting those synapses joining up. 
And that happens in early adolescence. So I start getting a real kick out of taking risks. Unfortunately, my prefrontal cortex is it's lagging a bit. It's not quite there yet. So I get a kick out of taking risks before the part of my brain that would tell me not to take that risk has fully developed. It also, this phenomenon of these two parts of the brain developing offer a really important opportunity for parents and other people around teenagers to help set them on the right path. Because you can take risks that can lead to more learning, exploration, and a life that you want for your kids. But risk taking can also go the other way towards addiction and crime. And the people around the teenagers and the environment that they find them in really has the biggest impact on which path the child, now a teenager, takes in their life. So the next video in the series is gonna talk about how parents, caregivers, educators can support what we call more resilient life path and less of a vulnerable life path where the teen would be vulnerable to risks. We want them to be resilient to risks and be able to learn from failure and risk taking in the future. Okay, let's just talk a little bit more about the prefrontal cortex. So the prefrontal cortex, like I said earlier, has the role of inhibiting behavior. And we can call that cognitive control. This is something that is developing in teens. And it's also why they don't think things through all the way, because they are motivated by that dopamine kick, by getting that immediate reward. That's the main motivation. And they don't have that control to say, whoa, now that's not a good idea. I want to talk about one more thing. Why does your teen get so embarrassed and seem so susceptible to peer pressure? Well, you've probably guessed by now that part of that's an important function of being able to join society, right? They have to be less, less dependent on their parents and more able to connect and be part of an interconnected society. Well, in the brain, what has been observed is that a part of that prefrontal cortex we were talking about, the medial part, the middle, is really an active development in the teen years. And what does that part of the brain do? Well, it's the part that tries to understand how I'm observed by other people. So teenagers are very sensitive to how they could potentially be observed by others. This is a skill that we kind of need to be able to live successfully in society. But with teens, it's hyper-elevated, so they're very, very sensitive to what's going on around them and how they might be perceived. So when their dad says something that he thinks is funny, if I think one of my very important friends is watching, I'm not going to want that to happen. And unfortunately, it's also what makes teens so vulnerable to peer pressure. It's a tricky moment for parents though, because the child or the teen now is more, let's say likely to listen to a friend than a parent necessarily. Again, I'll just say right here, I'm not, I'm not trying to say this is true all the time of everybody. These are really just the trends that we see in the current research that exists. Now, that's it the basics you need to know about the teenage brain. Here's 